If you're planning to study in UK, know that not all universities are worth investing money in. Some universities are expensive and definitely worth the money. And some universities, they're not worth the money. So regardless of whatever your counselor tells you, know this for a fact that there are some good universities, some bad universities, and investing money in a university depends on the university. There are some universities where you'll be investing more money, they'll be better, and some universities where you'll be investing less money, not as good. So let me give you a practical example of this. I give you a chance to study an MBA here in India. You can study at LPU and invest somewhere around 3 lakh rupees for an MBA. Or on the other hand, you can study at IIM Ahmedabad and spend 21 lakh rupees for an MBA. Which one makes more sense? Wait, do you think you will go for LPU 3 lakh rupees or IIM Ahmedabad 21 lakh rupee MBA? Wait, you want to choose IIM Ahmedabad? <laughs> Such a dumb person. You're spending 7 times more money on IIM Ahmedabad. <laughs> Such a dumb person, right? Spending 7 times more money on the same degree. Not exactly. Everyone would choose IIM Ahmedabad because it is a better degree, it is a better course and it will have better future outcome. Similarly, if you end up finding a cheaper degree in UK, that just doesn't mean that it is better. So return on investment is just not calculated by the cost of the degree. It also includes the returns that you will make from the degree. And in this video, I'm going to talk about 10 universities in UK that you should definitely be applying to. Probably if you get a chance to study at these 10 universities, definitely go. And if your university is not in this list, then do one thing, go to the comment section, write the university name and the course that you're going for and let me tell you whether it is worth going for or not. Otherwise, you can go to the description, fill the form, my team will get in touch with you. They will assess your application and tell you whether the option that you have is the best option for you or not. That would be even better because many a times students just settle for less. And if you can get better, definitely you should be applying for that. So without further ado, let's talk about the 10 universities. At number 10, we have University of Glasgow. The fees would be around 19 to 29 lakh rupees depending on which course you're going for. But the average placement rate is somewhere around 96%, which is considerably higher when I compare it with other British universities. Now it comes slightly lower in rankings. You'll see it's somewhere around 13th rank. But according to me, it's definitely at number 10. At number 9, I'll keep a university that is slightly cheaper, that is University of Bristol. Now here you will be spending somewhere around 15 to 16 lakh rupees on your education fees alone. But the thing is, their placements are again really strong. The university website itself claims that 95% of the students are being placed within 6 months of their graduation. And one good thing about this university is they have Bristol Scholarship for International Students, which helps international students fund their education to a huge extent. At number 8, I would keep University of Manchester. Now, the thing is, University of Manchester is also a partner university. So, majority of the students would have Bristol, Glasgow and Manchester in the universities that they're applying to. But they will keep this as their dream college, University of Manchester as their dream college. No, it's not a dream college. It's number 8 university. If you have the chance to apply to better universities, do apply. You have 7 other universities. But if you end up in University of Manchester, it's it. Honestly, not that bad of an option. They have a 90% placement rate, but do keep this in mind that many other universities might say that they have 95-97% placement rate. The majority of the times lie. Even getting a job in McDonald's is a placement. So with University of Manchester, you're at least getting £40,000, which is 40 lakh package, which is still fine. At number 7, we have King's College London. Now you would be thinking, oh, number 7 King's College London, interesting. Why? Because it is very costly. 35 lakh rupees. You would be spending 35 lakh rupees to study in King's College London. That is why I have kept it at number 7. At number 6, I have kept Edinburgh University. At number 5, I would keep London School of Economics. Now many of you guys would be wondering, Murad, number 5 London School of Economics. How is that possible? Because their acceptance rate is terribly low. Their acceptance rate is 12.2% only. No, it's not as bad as Oxford and Cambridge, but at the same time, London School of Economics is not compared with Oxford and Cambridge. They're in another league altogether. They are in their own league. Now, when we talk about London School of Economics having 12.2% acceptance rate, we also need to understand that their graduates within five years of graduation reach to a point where they're making 50,000 pounds, which is somewhere around 50 lakh rupees salary, which is very good considering it is UK. If it was US, it would have been definitely higher. 
But the best thing with London School of Economics is that you will be applying for four different scholarships in London School of Economics. One is the LSE South Asia Scholarship. Second one is LSE South East Asia Scholarships, LSE Commonwealth Shared Scholarship, LSE Undergraduate Support Scheme. And there are many other scholarships for Indians. Now, if I have to make a list of four universities that I will keep as a dream university for every student, these are the four universities that you have to apply for. At number four, you have University College London. Christopher Nolan, Mahatma Gandhi and Graham Bell, all of these guys come from this university. Now, ideally, the average fees is really high. You will be spending somewhere around 40 lakh rupees in this university, but it is worth the investment. And here you have to apply for these scholarships. UCL Global Excellence Scholarship, UCL Access Opportunity Scholarship, UCL Undergraduate Bursary, UCL India Postgraduate Scholarship, UCL Bright Futures Fund Scholarship. Within five years, students are reaching to salaries of 40 lakh Indian rupees, which considerably is lower than London School of Economics. But I also have to consider that these are some of the humanities fields where these students are making such money. At number three, we have Imperial College London. Yes, it is amongst the best business, engineering and medical schools all across the world. 93% of the students end up finding jobs within three months of their completion of graduation from Imperial College London. Their acceptance rate is low, but their focus on innovation and the salaries that students get from this university are completely amazing. At number two, I would keep University of Cambridge and at number one, I would keep University of Oxford. Now, I'll not waste your time explaining why University of Cambridge is best, why University of Oxford is best. Both of these universities are amazing, but I will talk about the scholarships that you have to apply for in both these universities. In Oxford, you have to apply for Rhodes Scholarship, Clarendon Fund Scholarship, Oxford Weddenfield and Hoffman Scholarship, Ertegun Scholarship, Schwarzerman Scholar, Commonwealth Scholar, and then these are two other scholarships that you have to apply for, which I just cannot pronounce. And in Cambridge, you have to apply for Gates Cambridge Scholarship, Cambridge Trust Scholarship, Commonwealth Scholarship, Cambridge International Scholarship, Cambridge Overseas Trust Scholarship, Schlumberger Cambridge Scholarship, Churchill Scholarship, Harding Distinguished Postgraduate Scholars Program. Now, this was a question majorly students had which university to apply to, but there is one major question which course to go for. These are the courses you should not go for. If you're going for these courses, bad, bad idea. And yeah, these are the courses you have to go for. So watch this video if you want to know what courses to not go for. These are the ones that you have to go for.